Well, hi, and welcome or welcome back to Evan's Homeschool Adventure. I'm Sarah. And if you want to see more videos on Jewish homeschooling, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted each time I post a new video. In today's video, I'm going to share a short unit study I'm planning to use with my early elementary aged kids to learn about the U.S. presidential election. In case you're new to my channel, here's an outline of the steps I usually think about when I'm creating a simple unit study. I do also consider a step seven that's not listed here, and that is when I sort of think about integrating other content areas within these six elements. No matter the unit plan, I always, always start with books. And sometimes that's all I plan for a simple unit study, just a stack of books. For this unit study, I didn't plan all that much. And out of these six elements, I've planned for books, audiovisual materials, a game, and I guess what you can consider sort of an experience. Um, well, we're, I'm going to plan to have a couple of discussions with my kids. If my kids end up really getting into this unit, we'll end up doing more, but if not, that is where we're planning to stay. So I'm filming this video in 2020, and my kids are young elementary age kids, and we really focus on Midos and character development in everything we do. And while I want my kids to learn about the presidential election, I'm not planning to teach them much about the specific candidates that are running in this election. Instead, here's what I plan to focus on. I want to take a higher level approach and I want them to learn about the criteria for how to become the U.S. president, uh, what the president's job is, and given that, what needs to be true about his or her character. I want them to know about what voting is and how some people had to really fight for their right to vote. And I'm going to share with them how I figure out who I'm going to vote for, not just in this year, but in any U.S. presidential election year. Okay, so this is always the first thing I do whenever I'm planning a unit study is find the books I want to use. And here's a list of the books that I think I want to use that I've been able to find at the local library. Now I haven't had the time to read through many of these yet, so I'm not quite sure which ones I'll use as my spine texts and which ones I'll use as my supplemental texts, but most of these came highly recommended from, from some of my favorite bloggers. Okay, so I found my books and next I'm going to look for audiovisual materials. So here's the list of audiovisual opportunities that I collected that I might want to show my kids. Like the audiovisuals I collect for all of my units, we probably are not going to get to all of these, but I like to have a list to choose from when we're up to this. And there are so many cool things to talk about in this unit, from the Declaration of Independence and how we became a country, to some of our past presidents, to what the Electoral College is and how that even works. There are so many cool opportunities here. Okay, this is our loan games slash play opportunity for this unit plan. This is a board game called Election Night, and it's for kids eight and up. It's a two player or two team game, and there aren't really any politics involved. It's a strategy game where you're trying to get the 270 electoral votes you need in order to become the next president of the United States. And along the way, your kid will learn about the US elections process, United States geography and civics, all while doing math. There are two versions of the game. Uh, on one side of the board is the addition version, and that's for younger players. And on the flip side of that is the multiplication version for older kids. The addition side takes probably about half an hour to play, and the multiplication side takes about an hour. So to play, you have a set of dice that you roll and you choose uh, sums or products based on what side of the game you're playing that are assigned to pre-numbered state groups. And you could choose different sums or products based on what your results are, and then you use dry erase markers to tally the votes in the states you're targeting. One of the things I love about this game is the way the dice were created to support operational fluency. These dice are, were created specifically to produce combinations of harder to learn sums and products so that kids are practicing these operations during play. In place of hands-on or experiential learning in this unit, I'm planning a series of discussions. And here are some of the prompts I'm planning to use. Number one, we're gonna discuss what it means to live in a democracy, a place where the people choose, they vote how they want things to work by making official uh, election decisions. We all have rights and to keep these rights, we have responsibilities. Our laws are the rules and our representatives legislate, meaning they make the rules of official based on our input. We're going to have a discussion sort of based around these ideas. Next, we're going to think about what are the important characteristics of a president? Is a candidate's behavior as important as their ideas? 
And third, I plan to sort of explore the issues with my kids. I'll first ask them sort of what issues they care about, um, which should be interesting. And then I'll plan to share some of the major issues that voters today are interested in in a way that's appropriate for my children. And we'll explore how opinions are sometimes supported by facts and other times by emotions. And also, when we disagree with another person's position, can we understand where they're coming from, even if we disagree with them? Can we really get into their shoes to find a shred of shared interest? And can we understand that doing that is not a negation of our position, but a, an expansion of ourselves to really understand that of another? Okay, so I anticipate there'll be many ways I'll be able to integrate Torah Hashkafa into our various discussions, and I plan to capitalize on them when they arise. But here's a more structured way I'm planning to tie in Judaics into this unit. There's a special blessing we say when we see kings, presidents, and other world leaders. Specifically, upon seeing a non-Jewish ruler who has the power to pardon people who have been sentenced to death, so leaders like the President of the United States or the Queen of England, for example, when we see these leaders, we're obligated to recite the bracha, Baruch Shenasan Mikvodo Lavasar Vadam, which means roughly, Hashem, you are the source of all blessing, the Melech Ha'olam, the king of the world, who has imparted some of his kavod, his uh, honor, to Vasar Vadam, to flesh and blood, to, to people. And the Torah requires of the Jewish people that we relate any impressive events or experiences to the fact that God is the source of all that's impressive. And by making this bracha, this blessing, we're acknowledging the true source of the leader's power. We're required to recite the blessing upon seeing a leader, even if he or she is known to be an evil tyrant. The blessing is not meant as a symbol of honor or respect towards that leader. Rather, when we see a world leader, and specifically the way he or she is usually honored and respected, we'll be able to better appreciate the honor that will be given to the Melech HaMashiach, which is in part the purpose of this blessing. So I plan to share all this with my kids and, and have a discussion. They'll also read the blessing in Hebrew and note this is without Shem and Malchus. Um, then they'll copy the blessing from block to script in Hebrew, thereby tying in both Kriya and um, so reading in Hebrew and Kasiva, writing in Hebrew. And there you have it. For my early elementary aged kids, this is all I've planned for this unit. But as always when we're learning, if my kids become particularly interested in some aspect of this topic, we'll make room to go down those rabbit holes. Well, thank you so much for watching. Let's keep the conversation going. In the comments section, I'd love to see how you're planning to teach your young kids about the election and how you plan to incorporate Judaics into it. And if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you're sure to catch my future videos.